the court would reduce, even if not eliminate, issues regarding the integrity of any future proceedings. Of course, we think that the entire proceeding that became before this has no integrity at all. And this is crazy because they have been going so fast. Like they are just totally caught. Can't even come up with a schedule. Sorry. Chutkin's like, what? I've been working on these motions the last two months. Even more than the immunity decision that there'll be other things that support Trump's appeal. But this brings us to the main point. The New York prosecution was politics and not justice. That's why we call it lawfare. The Trump sentencing battle continues. Now Trump's defense team is asking for a postponement, a continuance of the sentencing date, which is coming up for the middle of September. And the big question, of course, is what is Judge Mercon going to do? Are we actually going to have sentencing? Is this going to go forward? Is this going to be postponed? Is Bragg going to come out and do what Jack Smith did and ask for a continuance? Or is Trump going to be sentenced to prison? And oftentimes what happens when, you know, you're not the president, when you're sentenced to custody, you go into custody on that day. Now, he's a former president, and so there's all sorts of complexities here. But generally, yeah, on sentencing, you go in. Unless you can negotiate another self-surrender date later on. But most of the time, no, be prepared to go into custody. So we're asking ourselves if any of that is going to happen. Trump's team has come out, and they have asked for a postponement, an adjournment, coming from Blanche Law. And remember, we're in Judge Mercon's courtroom. This is the same judge whose daughter worked for Kamala Harris and who worked for Joe Biden and many other Democrats, the same judge's daughter who said her daddy didn't like any of Trump's tweets, which were his official statements from the White House when he was the president. So the daddy was commenting on official business that the president was doing. So we showed bias. We also know that Judge Mercon donated to Joe Biden twice and they were small little spike donations, right? He's like, I don't want to like do $2,500 or the limits. I just want to do, you know, $30, $10, $15. And he did it twice for Joe. So obviously corrupt. The whole trial was corrupt. We had insane witnesses and so on. But this judge is so non-transparent that what he is required of everybody in this case as the sentencing is right around the corner. We're asking ourselves now for a postponement, but the defense team, of course, they've been handcuffed. They only get one page for a pre-motion letter. So they're asking the judge for permission to file a more substantive motion later on. But this dropped August 14th and it's going to Judge Mercon. And they say, listen, judge, gosh, the court should adjourn any sentencing that's scheduled in this case. Get rid of it, saying the one should not be necessary because dismissal and vacature of the jury's verdicts are required based on presidential immunity until after the 2024 election. So postpone this until after the election, but as an aside, you don't need it anyways. Presidential immunity is going to immunize Trump. And remember just briefly what the Supreme Court said. There is a presumption of immunity for official acts or at least acts that are even within the outer perimeter of being official acts. So it's like, if it's even in the gray area, we start with a presumption. Then you prove that it is not immune and then you kick it out of there. And other acts are absolutely immune, okay? If it's an official act like that's codified in the constitution, that is absolutely immune. You cannot criminalize that and that conduct cannot be used against you in a trial. Now, Trump's people have already lodged their objections multiple times, even before the trial started. The judge ignored them, even though he knew that this was pending with the Supreme Court and carried on with the trial regardless. But he says, okay, we respectfully submit this pre-motion letter to you, Mercon, seeking that adjournment relief. So continue the sentencing, get rid of it, which can be deemed the motion, right? So actually, we're just going to deem this the motion. So notwithstanding the court's ruling on the disputed recusal issue, because the judge has refused to recuse himself three times, even though he's got a litany of conflicts of interest, the requested adjournment would prospectively mitigate the asserted conflicts and the appearances of impropriety. So in other words, if you got rid of the sentencing, then we would know that you're not a corrupt piece of garbage. And so we wouldn't need to really battle over that anymore. Just get rid of the sentencing, okay? And you'll solve our problem. We'll be done. We'll leave you alone. Which are also the subject of an ongoing congressional inquiry, okay? So Congress is also wondering why you're so biased. Now, in yesterday's ruling, Judge Mercon, which we read here, the court did not address the significance of the 2019 conversation with your honor's daughter, where your honor, the judge, judge criticized Trump's use of Twitter. And this is when the judge's daughter was on the podcast, Lauren, and we played all of that here. And the judge's daughter was telling the podcast host, well, you know, my dad doesn't really like when he uses Twitter. What? And the judge didn't have any cases, I don't think at that time, but then he got it right. With the new fact being that existing tweets from President Trump at the time of that conversation are squarely at issue in the pending presidential immunity motion because Trump's ex-account, Twitter at the time, was his official 
natural means of communication with the American people, which is why they banned him from it, to try to shut him from communicating with us, because he could have told us the truth after January 6th. They didn't want you to know that. Now, moreover, since the recent recusal motion, Your Honor, as Kamala Harris did previously, all right, Tim Walls wrongfully referred to this case in a public speech as the Democratic Party's nominee for vice president. So Biden prosecuted his opponent, Kamala is prosecuting her opponent. They're, you know, two peas in the same pod, part of the same administration, and she's, you know, right there next to him all the time. So now Walls is going to be using their own weaponized prosecutions for his benefit as well, because she's obviously with Kamala now. Now, in the same time frame, Michael Nellis, a business partner of your honor's daughter at Authentic Campaigns, posted on social media about making maximum donations to the Harris campaign and using his clout with that Harris campaign to get Walls to talk on our white dudes for Harris call last week. And yeah, that's exactly right. This guy, Michael Nellis, is apparently a business partner. I think might be the co-founder. I could be mistaken on that, but you can find him on X. And he came out with this response to Congress because remember, Jim Jordan is sending letters over to everybody saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. You guys are getting paid by Democrats and her dad is prosecuting the Democrats number one enemy. That seems like there's a conflict there. So he responded and he has a whole litany of reasons why they're amazing and Republicans are dumb and they're smart and Republicans are stupid. You know how that goes. But sentencing is currently scheduled now to occur after the commencement of early voting. And their favorite line these days is Trump is a convicted felon, even though that's only like partially true. It's like if Trump is a convicted felon, what was he doing in Florida voting today? Did you guys see that? We talked about it this morning on Locals. He was voting. Yeah. Huh. I thought he was a convicted felon and felons can't vote. That's kind of weird. Sentencing is currently scheduled to occur after the commencement of early voting in presidential elections by adjourning the sentencing until after that election, which is coming up, which is of paramount importance to the entire nation, including tens of millions of people who do not share the views of Authentic, its executive and its clients, the court would reduce, even if not eliminate, issues regarding the integrity of any future proceedings. Of course, we think that the entire proceeding that came before this has no integrity at all. The requested adjournment, if you postpone this sentencing date, would prevent Alvin Bragg from filing a sentencing submission while this court is still considering the presidential immunity motion. In an August 5th, 2024 letter, Mercon indicated that the court will issue a decision on immunity on September 16th. And then on the 18th, we've got the sentencing date and it remains unchanged. So mark your calendars for the 18th. Now, and that the parties should keep these dates in mind for purposes of sentencing submissions. However, in a July 2nd, 2024 letter, so just about a month before that judge, the court acknowledged that the sentencing may not be necessary. We read that too. In light of Trump, because Trump's immune, in a manner that is personally and politically prejudicial to President Trump and his family and harmful to the institution of the presidency as a result of the type of peculiar public opprobrium associated with these proceedings that troubled the Trump court, right? Like, in other words, the Supreme Court sent their immunity decision back down, and in it, we talk about public policy, right? The Supreme Court thinks about things in terms of incentives and disincentives, and this, you know, allowing no immunity creates this very perverse incentive, which has obviously been exploited by the Democrats four times, and then they scream at the other side about democracy. Now, the requested adjournment of this sentencing date, Your Honor, is also necessary to allow Trump adequate time to assess and to pursue state and federal appellate options in response to any adverse ruling. So if you drop it on us, we're going to appeal it and we're going to invoke immunity immediately, just like we did with Judge Chutkin. And Judge Chutkin was so mad about that. Do you remember? Oh, she was so mad. Now, the Trump decision arose from an interlocutory appeal. So in the middle of the case, not at the conclusion of the case, as most appeals are. While proceedings were stayed in the federal trial court and the Supreme Court confirmed that a trial court's denial of immunity is appealable before trial. So you really screwed up, Judge, is what they're saying. All right, we appealed this in the middle of the case. We know that other courts had their federal trials stayed, like in the Judge Chutkin case. And the Supreme Court also confirmed that you can appeal this before the trial happens. Judge Mercon said, no, you can appeal this after the trial occurs because they're racing to get Trump convicted. It follows that any denial of the pending motion, so if you deny this, we are going to be appealing this immediately, just like we did with Judge Chutkin. Okay? Put simply, until Bragg's presidential immunity violations are addressed fully and finally, this court may not adjudicate this matter anymore. The Supreme Court came back down. You cannot sentence us now because we have to go back and figure out immunity. We already put a pin in this months ago. You went over that. And so we're reverting back to that prior date, reinvigorating those objections about immunity. So this court may not adjudicate
hate this. Sorry. A single business day is an unreasonably short period of time for President Trump to seek to vindicate these rights. In other words, you can't just come out on September 16th. Okay, this is why this judge is doing this. And this doesn't bode well for Trump. What you can glean out of this September 16th and 18th date, I think what the judge is choreographing to us is that he wants to put him in prison. Right? There's not enough time to do anything about it. Now, the current schedule that you've scheduled, Judge, to try to railroad us, contemplates the type of highly expedited proceedings that the Supreme Court already criticized, but you guys have been demanding because they want to convict Trump before the election. Now, as is relevant here, after wrongly denying that presidential immunity existed for months because Trump filed a motion objecting to it, then he objected to it many times at the trial before the trial started. It's been repeated ad nauseum. Bragg, though, purported to authoritatively address the scope of presidential power and the immunity doctrine, inaccurately, by the way, obviously, in a brief just filed just 23 days after the Trump decision. Now, they did this despite only limited federal litigation experience and the notable and telling exception of a former high-ranking official, which is Colangelo, so they don't have any federal experience except Biden's guy who came from the DOJ number three, and without any input from the federal government. So Bragg responded, remember, Jack Smith is like, oh, crap, this sucks. And he knows he's got his indictment is riddled with immune conduct. And so he's asked for more time, but Alvin Bragg doesn't need any more time, and Alvin Bragg didn't even conversate with him about this. Nothing that they felt worth mentioning. The court still has not addressed our request to respond to the purported amicus brief, despite the fact the court had an opportunity to consider our arguments a while ago. And in contrast to all of this, on August 8th, Jack Smith's office, who's not even a real boy, notified the federal trial judge in District of Columbia, Judge Chutkin, that they are, quote, continuing to assess the Supreme Court decision, including through consultation with our other DOJ components, and had not even finalized the position on the most appropriate schedule for the parties to brief the issues, okay? So we are so confused, we don't even know what a schedule should look like. Like, we can't even propose a briefing schedule. Like, I don't know, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, 120 days? How much time? Nine months? We're gonna be here a year? Like, how long? And this is crazy because they have been going so fast. Like, they are just totally caught. Can't even come up with a schedule. Sorry. Chutkin's like, what? I've been working on these motions the last two months. Because she wanted to submit those, right? So that Jack could go back. Like, Jack's like, go fast, go fast, go fast, go fast. And he's not playing ball because he doesn't even have lawful authority to be in his position. But in that case, the schedule, says Trump's defense, for litigating presidential immunity will not even be determined until at least September 5th. And that status conference and that timing illustrates just how reasonable it is to have the potential for only a single day between a decision on a first impression presidential immunity issue and an unprecedented and an unwarranted and I would say illegal sentencing. Now, finally, setting aside the naked election interference objectives, it's a good word. We like to use that word here a lot. There is no valid countervailing reason for the court to keep the current sentencing date on the calendar. Get rid of it. There is no basis for continuing to rush because we have to settle immunity. The Supreme Court said so. Accordingly, we respectfully request that any sentencing, if one is even needed, be adjourned until after the presidential election. Signed by Todd Blanche and Emile Beauvais. Great motion, and I absolutely love how they're playing hard on the immunity line, right? Sentencing should not come next. It's about immunity, and we have to figure out all this immunity stuff. Even Jack Smith can't figure it out, so Alvin Bragg's gonna figure it out? Come on. Or rather, Matthew Colangelo? Come on. So this is good work from Trump's defense. Now, let's understand, we're still in New York, and nothing resembles justice in this jurisdiction at all. And so we have some concerns about this, because if the judge just anchors this in and says, well, I don't care. You know, I'm going to sentence you. Like they really got to get him sentenced as well, because right now it's only like kind of a conviction. It's like, you know, like the Democrats identify him as being convicted, but we don't. They say, well, that's how we identify him. And we're like, well, I don't know. Why is he voting then? Does he have a criminal conviction like on his record? Like if you did a background check, would you see that show up? No. Okay. He was voting today in Florida, right? Okay. So yeah, they need that to happen. And if they could put him in prison, whoo, man, that would be really good for, I think, some Democrats, but I'm not sure it would be so good for the country. I think people would have a big problem with that. Andy McCarthy had an opinion piece over on Fox News. He says, get ready for prison, baby. He says, here's why. They're going to enable Kamala and the media to label him a convicted felon sentenced to prison. Even if he doesn't go to prison, he could be sentenced to prison. So here's what McCarthy says. He says, look, to the surprise of no one, Judge Murkan has yet again denied Trump's recusal motion. It's not just that he's previously denied this. 
this, he's also signaled, according to McCarthy, that he intends to sentence Trump on the 18th. Trump's defense team is going to be making arguments, and of course they've done that. But on Tuesday, Murkan denied another recusal motion, and the dates are scheduled back to back, the 16th and the 17th. He says, if we read the tea leaves, Murkan has already decided he's going to deny Trump's immunity motion, which I think is right. He's going to come back and say, no, if I had to guess, he's going to say it's cumulative and unnecessary, and it was harmless error, some version of that. But there's a higher likelihood he's going to impose a prison sentence against Trump. By the time he'd issued his letter, Murkan had had weeks to mull over the SCOTUS decision. He told the parties to get ready for sentencing. If Murkan had any intention of vacating the verdicts, he says, he would not have stuck to the sentencing date. He says, I suspect that Murkan will rationalize that Trump was not charged based on official presidential acts, would have been convicted even if they didn't introduce that evidence, right? So it's cumulative and harmless. And such a ruling might be wrong, but Murkan made so many other bad rulings. Who cares? He just, again, he's not even trying to adhere to the law. All he's trying to do is find bits of the law that serve his predetermined outcome. And then he finds them and then that creates plausibility for him. McCarthy says it's his view, even more than the immunity decision, that there'll be other things that support Trump's appeal. But this brings us to the main point. The New York prosecution was politics and not justice. That's why we call it lawfare. And I think they're going to do everything they can to put him in a term of incarceration. But whether they actually physically take him to prison, I don't know that there's enough fortitude for them to do that. And if they do that, I think it's going to bite them in the butt big time. And so a part of me almost hopes they try it. Try to put Trump in federal prison. See what that does to the electorate. When our Democratic Party and Democratic judges who work and support Joe Biden imprison their political opponents, you almost hope they try it because I think it would be the end of the election immediately. We're going to continue to cover this, my friends, and we're going to continue to expose the truth of what's happening here. We are gearing up to make sure that all of these political prosecutions are covered now between the election and we're grateful that you join us as the truth continues to come out. We'll be covering it. Thanks for joining. Thank you for subscribing wherever you're watching it. We'd love to see you back here on the next one.